Hello and welcome. I hope you're doing well. Come and get cozy as I share with you some absolutely terrifying encounters. I post new videos every day, so be sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell, and you'll be notified when new daily content arrives on my channel. All right, let's get right into it. In Marinette County, Wisconsin, my father and I were deer hunting the Wisconsin gun deer season on 80 acres of land owned by my father's friend. The land was in the middle of the theater swamp. We had several encounters before and during that week. During the preseason scouting in the area and the actual hunting season, I found large tracks, although it was difficult to make them out with any detail since it was very wet and muddy and had been raining and snowing, which washed out any definable tracks. I first assumed they were bear tracks, but given their uniformity, bears have smaller front feet than their rear. I doubted that. I also noted the absence of any deer or any other activity in what became the center of all these encounters geographically. The deer that I observed before and during the hunting season seemed to be deliberately avoiding the center of the swamp and were staying well to the edges near the farmland. That struck me as odd. In my many years of hunting and spending time in the outdoors, I've never observed any other animal being so territorial that it scares other game out of the area completely. Our first real encounter happened about an hour before sunrise on the first day or two of the hunting season. My father and I were walking into our stands for the morning hunt. We got down into the swamp and crossed the first stream so that we were now on the south bank heading west. Shortly after we crossed, I noticed that something was following us in a parallel path about 30 to 50 yards to the south. We walked and it walked with us it was still very dark and the vegetation too thick to be able to see anything. We could hear it, that's it. We also noticed a dank, musky odor, although faint at this point. After going approximately one quarter of a mile to the west, we had to turn southwest and follow a short trail, approximately 100 yards, around some deadfalls to reach the old wagon trail which went to our stands. We had gone maybe 30 yards when something directly in front of us, maybe 20 yards, started screaming and howling. It made the hair stand up on the back of both of our necks. I couldn't figure out what it was. I flashed my flashlight in its direction and got a reflection from a set of eyes, which weren't the usual color of a reflection for deer, bears, raccoon, or opossum. All animals have a unique color that their eyes reflect at night when flashed with a bright light. The eyes seemed to be seven to ten feet high. As it was very dark and I couldn't make out anything more, I assumed it was something like a raccoon or a bear in a tree. The odor mentioned was stronger now. Both my father and I turned around and moved as fast as possible through the rough terrain back to the stream where we sat down behind some logs and faced the direction where we encountered the animal. As the sun came up, I could make out dark patches of fur moving through the deadfalls a hundred or so yards in the distance. We waited a while and then crossed back to the north side of the stream where we found a different way around the deadfalls by crossing the same stream so its south bank further west via a dead tree that had fallen across the stream and then headed south and around the deadfalls from their west side. When my father and I headed back to the truck for lunch after hunting, the rest of the morning, we went back using our new route and avoided the area of the encounter. We noticed that something had relieved itself, feces, they looked more human than anything I've seen in the woods from animals. In the middle of the dead tree over the stream where we crossed, it was very odd to say the least. 
It seemed like territorial behavior to me. We noticed tracks on the old wagon trail we followed to our stands also the next day. My father had an encounter in the same area later in the week while hunting. I was in a tree stand about a hundred yards southeast where he sat in a ground blind. So I didn't witness this directly. It was afternoon and my dad noticed something walking towards him from the west through the swamp. It was bipedal, dark, and hairy and tall. The vegetation was too thick, so my father never made out a face or head, just a general shape. It was grunting and making similar noises. It kept walking straight from my dad, so he broke a few sticks and limbs to make some noise and hopefully scare it off. That didn't stop it, so my dad raised his rifle and aimed it at the animal, although he didn't shoot. The animal stopped and stood behind some trees for a short while, before it then took off in the opposite direction through the swamp. I heard all this commotion and got out of my stand to go see what was wrong. My dad was a little shaken up since he had never had anything like that happen before. We called it a day and headed in. We didn't hunt that area much more after that. Deer activity was almost down to nothing and the encounters we'd had with this animal had us a bit leery. Needless to say, I haven't been back to the area for seven years. I think I covered everything that happened in multiple incidents above. Both my father and I are accomplished outdoorsmen, and neither of us have ever experienced anything like this before. The area was made of cedar swamp surrounded by farmland and some hardwood ridges. The swamp itself is quite large, covering several hundred acres, maybe more, and stretching through a large area northwest of Crivet, Wisconsin. There are three streams that flow through the area, the cedar swamp following the length of their bottoms in all directions. There are some old logging roads in the area and one old wagon trail cutting through the swamp that used to be used many, many years ago by people living in the area to go and from Krivitz to their homes and farms. On to the next one. In Marathon County in Wisconsin, at 11 p.m. in September, a woman was driving home when she suffered a flat tire. Upon preparing to exit the vehicle to fix the tire, a large beast appeared in front of her. She described the creature as being about six and a half feet tall with a large pointed head, very yellow eyes, large curved fangs, very hairy and walking upright. The creature made a lunge for her, causing her extreme terror. She immediately slammed and locked the door and made a bolt for home on her flat tire. When leaving, she said the creature howled like a wolf and took off across a field. To this day, she will not travel down this road at night. On to the next one. In the late 1960s, a Russell County resident in Kentucky, on his way to work, allegedly observed a large ape-like creature as it crossed Highway 196 near Jabez. Ed later claimed for 10 years something would stalk him and his friends every time they walked a certain hill between their cabin and the Thomas branch of Lake Cumberland. Whatever it was, it walked on two legs and would stop every time he stopped and continued on every time he did, shadowing his every step. It had always stayed out of sight never once revealing itself, but he could hear it plainly. He was 12 years old when this started and had spent his whole life wondering what it could have been that haunted this particular hill. I think we can safely venture a guess. On to the next one. Four passing motorists, all family observed a Bigfoot in Scott County one night in September of 1985 as they were driving home at around 10 p.m. 
the figure was later described as a tall, about eight or nine foot, hairy man-like thing. The arms were longer than any man that I'd ever seen, said one witness 20 years later. It did not have on any clothing. Its eyes glowed like a cat's in the headlights, and there was a strong, indescribable odor in the air. It literally walked over a six-foot fence without once using its arms or its hands like it was a step or something. It seemed so unreal. The witness was impressed with the creature's exceptionally long arms, and it seemed to be in no hurry at all, even though it saw the witness. It stopped for a second, the witness claimed, turned its head to look at him, then stepped easily over another six-foot fence and disappeared into the night. One of the first counties formed after statehood in 1972, Scott County is located in the north-central part of the state and has a population of under 45,000 people. One of them, a four-year-old boy, disappeared and reappeared on August 16, 1999. At around 8.30 p.m. that evening, four-year-old Frank Downey somehow managed to open the door to his family's extremely rural, isolated home in Stamping Ground, Kentucky, and disappeared into the thick woods, along with two family dogs, both German shepherds, while his mother was looking the other way. When she noticed that he was gone, a desperate search of the area immediately ensued, to no avail. She called her husband, who was at work at the time of the son's disappearance, who then notified the police. Authorities searched throughout the night, focusing their efforts inside a one-mile perimeter from the point of disappearance, but they found no sign of Frank or his pets. Scott County Fire Chief Billy Wilhout was later quoted in a Lexington Herald article stating, Rescuers chose a one-mile radius distance because that's how far a boy Frank's age should be able to travel. Imagine to his surprise when at 8.30 a.m. the following morning, just 12 hours after the boy's disappearance, a farmer tending his grapevines found Frank and his dogs alive and well, three miles away from the Downey home. Frank was subsequently examined by a doctor and, except for the severe scratches on his bare feet, found to be unharmed. The Downies were, of course, elated and relieved at such a joyous outcome to the unfortunate event. But the question remained, how did Frank travel three times the distance that the search professionals believed was possible? If the reports which are currently available to the public are accurate, unwitting nighttime motorists are the most likely group of people to become Bigfoot witnesses. They are usually driving down some isolated stretch of country road late at night when one of the creatures suddenly steps out into the high beams to cross the road directly in front of them. Over and over, this game of peekaboo is played out. If these entities are smart enough to avoid classification for hundreds of years, why are they not smart enough to simply wait a few seconds until after the vehicle has passed before going about their way? Being discreet, it would appear, is certainly not a trait which very many of these creatures seem to possess and the list of the victims of Bigfoot indiscretion is growing. Two more passing motorists joined the list at around 3 a.m. on February 24, 2012, as they were heading south on I-75 near Sadieville, Kentucky. I saw something huge and shaped like the scruffy cedar-type bush trees, but it was right next to the road. The Road Commission will not allow trees or bushes to grow at the edge of the road, the witness, who was traveling with her son from Michigan to North Carolina, later said. She turned to her son and told him that she'd just seen a huge animal. He was almost sure that he'd seen it as well. Oddly, there was another vehicle in front of them, and it suddenly pulled over to the shoulder of the road and began backing up. The witness regrets that she did not stop to investigate as well to which she feels sure is what the car in front of her had done after having also seen the creature. 
I'm guessing it was seven to eight feet high, she said, just standing right next to the white line on the west side of the highway. Again, because it was by the white line, I know it wasn't a tree, and it was too tall to be a black bear. She also claimed the figure was three feet wide at the shoulders, which sloped upward toward the head with no apparent neck. With a very thick, bulky appearance, she could make out no distinct arm or leg shape, just that it was standing on two legs, bushy and darker than the night sky. She feels the creature was just standing there watching the cars pass by, waiting for its chance to cross the road. There was a car behind her as well, she stated, so she assumed that they likely saw it too, but if anyone other than her and her son saw the creature that winter night five years ago, they have yet to step forward. On to the next one. I lived in the Cedarmore area of southeastern Shelby County from 2008 to 2011. One evening during the spring of 2009, my family and several friends had built a fire and were sitting around and enjoying the night. At around 11 p.m., we started hearing what appeared to be something in the distance walking around. Being surrounded by dense woods, everyone dismissed it as a deer. Several hours later, after things started winding down, we started to pack up. That's when I noticed a figure in the low firelight just inside the tree line. It appeared to be around seven feet in height and judging from the outline, very broad. It looked as if it was just watching. Every time we would try to approach it, it would disappear into the woods and we would have objects thrown at us. Then, when we were making it back to the house, we could hear it moving alongside us at times. Trees could be heard breaking. After returning to my house and everyone had left, I tried letting the dogs out. I have two house dogs that can't wait to be let out. But that night, the dogs would not leave the house. Several times during the time that I lived there, me or a family member would catch a glimpse of a huge figure on the property. On a couple of occasions, there we heard some strange howls and large objects were thrown at the house during the night. In 2011, I received a job offer in Ohio and couldn't wait to move out of there. On to the next one. A Simpson County policeman reportedly saw a large hair-covered humanoid creature crossed the road in front of his cruiser one night in January 1977. Other such sightings had previously taken place in the area. Although the incident is somewhat scarce in details, it does show that all types of Commonwealth citizens are prone to having sightings of these creatures. They appear, it would seem, to both the official and unofficial alike. Another large, hairy, man-like beast was seen by a Simpson County family, but this one was truly bizarre in its appearance and may not be related to the Bigfoot creatures at all. Then again, the first sighting was back in August of 2006, said one of the witness's parents. Our children thought that one of our goats had gotten out of the fence and went to get it. They came running inside, terrified about what they had seen. They saw a white, long-haired, horned, sharp-nailed creature. They said that it looked like a white gorilla with a smashed face. It was in a crouched position like it was sleeping. It had shoulders much larger than a man's, very muscular and big-boned. Its hind legs were shorter but just as strong. It had four canine teeth that stuck out of its mouth even when closed. It did not have normal gorilla fingers or toes. It had nubby-like fingers and toes with claws. It looked like it could have easily weighed 500 pounds. It was lying down, but from the rear to the head, it was about five feet long. If it stood, it would have been much larger. It was sleeping with its arms crossed like when school children put their heads on their desks. This area 
has a history of animal mutilation and nighttime yowler activity, and the family was considering abandoning their house and moving away in order to escape the frightening activity. Me and my boyfriend at the time were riding his four-wheeler in the creeks, said another Simpson County Bigfoot eyewitness. We had just got to a deep spot, so he was trying to make sure that he didn't drown it out. I glanced to the left and thought I had seen something big and furry standing in the cane weeds. I'm five foot three, and the weeds were about two feet taller than me, and this thing was about two feet taller than them. I was about 15 to 20 yards from it. I looked back over there, hoping it wasn't what I thought it was, and it saw me and turned hunkered down and ran off. Its back was about three feet wide and it was a light brown color. During the ride, the couple had noticed four or five dead deer, each about half a mile from the last, and thought it strange that they should see so many of them. She further added that the creature appeared to be between eight and nine feet tall based on the height of the weeds it was walking through. She did not see any facial features. The arms were swinging like a human's as it walked away. The creature's ears were visible on the sides of the head, and she described them as slightly pointed and covered with hair. The incident allegedly took place at dusk just off Highway 100 near the ruins of a small bridge in Franklin, Kentucky in August of 2007. I hope you enjoyed those encounters, and if you did, be sure to hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. I post new content every single day, so be sure to hit that notification bell, and you'll be notified exactly when that new content arrives on my channel. Again, thank you so much, and until next time, bye!